Thank you very much, Ian, um, and good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It really is a, a pleasure to welcome you all to Queen's uh, and indeed to Belfast for the British Educational Research Association Conference. Uh, I want to pay a particular warm welcome to your new president, uh, Professor Gemma Moss. Gemma, it's been a pleasure to meet you, and also to Ian, your outgoing president, and to thank them and all of you for bringing this very important event to Queen's and back to Northern Ireland, and we certainly as a university are very honoured to be hosting this. Um, as Ian has said, it's actually quite a while, it's 17 years since um, the last Bureau Conference was held here, back in 1998. And that was actually a very important landmark year for Northern Ireland. After two years of very intensive political talks, 30 years of conflict, uh, we had the signing of the Good Friday or Belfast Agreement, um, a very important and momentous occasion in the history of Northern Ireland um, and of this island. And while we may still have our problems, as some of you who keep an eye on what's going on politically here from the outside and the stalemate, I've no doubt we'll get over that stalemate because we've done it so many times. But the important message actually is that Northern Ireland has changed immensely in that 17 years, both politically, socially and economically. Um, and there is much more change to come in my view. But the important thing is that education has been a prime driver, and some of the people in this room have been a prime driver for enabling and facilitating some of that change. Um, and this university and they will remain at the forefront in ensuring that that happens. Our honorary graduate back in our centenary year, 2008, Nelson Mandela, has said that Education is the most powerful weapon to both transform you as an individual, but also to change the world and society. And that's certainly something I absolutely subscribe to. And in our small corner of the world here, we have seen that firsthand. As a society emerging from conflict, Northern Ireland is uniquely placed, in my view, in education research. And as you know, in divided societies, education has a vital role to play in promoting cohesion and change in society. And I'm very proud to say that a number of my colleagues in this room, our School of Education, has really played uh, a leading role in that, not just here in Northern Ireland, but now reaching out globally to other parts of the world as well that are uh, embroiled in conflict. From the development of shared education between schools to informing the teaching of controversial issues associated with history and citizenship. Our education research influences day-to-day, uh, -day, um, year to year, the educational policy and practice in Northern Ireland and beyond. And I know you're going to hear great examples of that, not just hear those, but actually see some of those. People from outside Northern Ireland are often amazed at our education system and the institutional barriers that exist Indeed, people inside Northern Ireland are also amazed at some of them. Um, where children from two communities, and thankfully we have more than two communities emerging, educated in separate schools, could go through their formative school years without ever meeting someone from the other community. How bizarre is that? But that's the reality still here uh, in Northern Ireland, and it's something that we have to reflect on and we do reflect on. And I know over these few days, you will be getting an insight into what we, how we, what we do here has been helping to make some of those barriers not just become porous, but actually bring them right down. So for example, the shared education program, which enables teachers and pupils to move between schools and brings together those who will have the most influence in Northern Ireland for the future, and that's our children. As a result of the work of Joanne Hughes and Tony Gallagher, Shared education has now been prioritised by the Northern Ireland Executive and the process is ongoing to mainstream it across ed the educational system. And I have to say, I think that whole programme needs to be accelerated and it's something I know you'll give voice to. The model is also gaining global recognition with Joanne and her colleagues supporting the development of shared education interventions in other divided regions of the world, including Macedonia, Israel and Cyprus. And that's just one example of local talent impacting locally, but also globally at the same time. And of course, there will be lessons for us to learn from other divided communities. 
Schools participating in the Shared Education Programme are among those that I know you're going to visit over the next few days when you're out and about in Belfast. Others have participated in the successful Prison to Peace Initiative. That is a groundbreaking project which explores how ex-prisoners can engage with young people to demythologize the prison experience, to challenge stereotypes that are all too prevalent, particularly in disadvantaged parts of our society, and also, most importantly, to promote a better understanding of conflict and the shared essence of conflict among our young people. You will also meet the teachers and children in schools that have participated in the Iliad study, which investigated the links between educational underachievement and disadvantage. And in some parts of Belfast, North, East, and indeed West Belfast, we have some of the most disadvantaged communities, not just from an educational point of view, but from a health and public health point of view, right across Europe. And funded by the Office of First and Deputy First Minister, this research is now having a significant impact, and my view will have a very significant impact on future education policy and practice, particularly in those disadvantaged groups. And I understand that the school visits and symposium will follow are the very first that you'll ever have undertaken in your 41 years of existence. So uh, congratulations to you, because I think that's going to be a huge uh, learning event. Tomorrow, I know that you've invited uh, Professor Paul Connolly as one of your keynote lecturers. Um, whose research is having an influence for good on the lives of children right across Northern Ireland, but also as far afield as Colombia, Kenya, Serbia, Indonesia. I'm not going to steal Paul's thunder because he's going to speak to you tomorrow. Um, but Paul and his colleagues are part of a thriving dynamic research hub that has emerged within the School of Education, home to four globally global research institutes now that have attracted over 13 million in research funding uh, over the course of the last five years. And as some of you in the room will know, the school was ranked fourth in the most recent um, Research Excellence Framework National Exercise. The work of the school plays a very key role in our vision for this university, being a world-class international university with outstanding students and staff, but very much impacting on the needs of our local society and those around us. Underpinning all of the research we do, whether it's education, health, or beyond, is a commitment to achieving a real impact. In your case, an impact on the lives of educators and children, learners, and impacting across our policymakers. Um, and that I know you will all agree is what educational research is all about. Einstein once said that the only thing that interferes with his learning was his education. Well, I'm not sure I agree with him. I think that's what Bira and indeed this university uh, are about changing to make sure that they're one and the same. Um, and that's what you do. All of us in this room are driving the agenda in relationship to education. That means all of us must challenge ourselves on how best to prepare young people not to become history majors at the age of 21, but to become truly global citizens with great potential for leadership. We are all driven by a desire to ensure that education in all its forms, from early years all the way through to further and higher education, helps everyone to reach their full potential in this ever-changing world. And that will become more and more important for societies to thrive. I know that the, the focus of your debate over the next few days will address some of these key challenges in future direction of both education, research, policy, and practice. Those challenges notwithstanding, I know you will enjoy the chance to exchange the latest findings with each other, inspire and challenge each other as well, both in terms of your knowledge base and the, some of the research that you're involved in. For those of you who've never visited Belfast or Queens before, I hope you get a chance to look around this beautiful campus uh, and this beautiful city, just right next door, you have the Botanic Gardens, and hopefully the sun will stay out for you over the next couple of days. If you get a chance, go to the Ulster Museum. There are some fantastic exhibits there right now. Um, and uh, just have a great time, because again, that's part of 
contemplating and reflecting what you're about over the course of the next important few days. So lastly, I just want to say that your contribution here, not just over the next few days, but in what you do, is very, very important, not just for yourself or for your career, but in actually helping society challenge itself and overcome some of the day-to-day -day challenges to make it better. So thank you for uh, having me and uh, enjoy the next few days. And again, uh, you're very welcome to Queen's University Belfast. Thank you. <laughs>